Hello everyone. It's 11 o'clock Eastern Time. So, and it's Thursday. So that means it's time to stamp. Okay. Did you see what I'm going to make or what we're going to make today? Christmas card. I know it's August, but some people have a lot of Christmas cards to make, so they want to get started early, right? Oh, turned out my volume. One thing I forgot. Okay. Got my pieces ready. So if you're new to watching my Facebook Lives, I'm Nicole Steele. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm also the owner and creator and designer behind The Joyful Stamper. I have a blog, I have a store that you can shop at to get any of the supplies that I'm using today for this project. But I'm just, I'm super excited that you're here. Whether you're watching the replay or you're watching live, um, I'm just, I'm excited to stamp with you. It's no fun stamping alone, right? Okay, so... I discovered this card while browsing YouTube and there's a demonstrator in Canada. Her name is Tina Zink and her, her projects are so pretty and she did this what she called a tri-fold accordion card and I had I, my mind immediately went to the poinsettia set that's in the holiday catalog and I thought I have to make this and there's three different ways that you can make this card. It uses the same score lines, but depending on how you glue it, it'll be done three different ways. So as you can see, it is, it's an accordion fold card. And what I like about it is that I can use different patterns of designer series paper because a lot of times you get a pack and you're thinking, wow, these patterns are so pretty. I can't decide which one to use. Well, on this card, I was able to incorporate four different patterns. So I didn't have to decide. So that was really nice. Hi, Bonnie. Happy Thursday. <laughs> it's almost the weekend, although does that mean anything to people that are retired or working from home or anything anymore? So the suite that I used to make this card comes from page 15 of the holiday, Stampin' Up's holiday catalog. And I'm using the Poinsettia Place designer series paper. I'm going to be using the Poinsettia Petal stamp set and coordinating dies and I'm also going to be using these beautiful beaded pearls I have not used them yet so I was really excited to pull those out so that's what we're working with Let me clear off my space here I have a very very small stamp area so as I'm working along if you have questions or you have comments or you want to say anything just type it in because I'm watching my comments and um, I'm always enjoying what you guys have to say about anything anything at all all right, let's get started. So first I'm gonna pull out my scoreboard and bone folder because I need to score my cardstock. So I cut, I'm gonna put the dimensions to this project in the description to this video when I am done with this live here so that you don't have to worry about copying them and writing them down just yet. So I have my scoreboard, this is soft suede and this piece is 11 inches by five and a half inches and it will fold to fit into a standard A2 sized envelope. So put the 11 inch side at the top of your scoreboard and we're gonna score at four and a quarter inches and I always like to go over those score lines twice. Then at seven inches and then again at nine and three quarters of an inch. And now we're done with the scoreboard so we can set that aside. Okay, and the way we're going to fold this, we're going to fold it over, and we want to get those lines very sharp, very flat, so that's why a bone folder comes in handy for this. Okay, and that, you can see, is our tri-fold card just like this. Okay, so those are the score lines that you make for this. So now we're going to decorate this. So I cut some pieces of paper from that Poinsettia Place Designer Series paper. I'm going to use these three sides, but you can see, the, well these two are on either side of each other. 
And this one has this wood grain, which I really like, and I'm actually going to use it to stamp my sentiment. So these pieces are four by five and a quarter inches. This is two and a half by five and a quarter inches. And this is one by five and a quarter inches. And we're going to glue. Actually, before we glue them, this is what I wanted to do. I liked the soft suede base because it was kind of vintagey. So I'm going to take the blade of my paper snips. And I'm going to just very gently run it along the edges of my designer series paper. Now, designer series paper is thinner than cardstock, so that's why you want to very gently do this. Um, otherwise, you might tear the paper, which, if you're going for the really distressed look, that's perfectly okay. I did it on my sample card and I went ahead and used it anyways. But just use a light touch and it will all be good. Now, another way you can distress your paper is you can use your fingernail or you can use your bone folder or you don't have to distress it at all you can just leave the edges nice and smooth okay we have one more piece to go the skinny piece you have to be a little bit more careful of because of its width it's so narrow that it's a little bit easier to tear I'm a big fan of distressing my paper. Big, big fan of it. Okay, now we're going to glue. Oh, I keep reaching for the wrong glue bottle. Now we're going to glue these to our card base. And then I'll show you from there the three different ways that you can make this card. So this larger piece is going to go on the inside like this. Okay, and then we're going to fold that. And we're gonna glue the next piece down. I love this paper because it has sheets in the traditional colors, real red, garden green, and old olive, but it also throws in a little bit of um, unexpected color, the soft suede, and there are sheets that have our new one of our new ink colors, Bumblebee, in there too, which actually looks really good as a poinsettia. Okay, so we've got those down. Now here's where you could make it three ways. So in my original example, I have it completely open like this, okay? But the first way that you can do this is turn this into a pocket card. So if you have a gift card to give somebody at Christmas or you wanna tuck a check or some money in there or you just wanna make a pocket card, you can do that by putting adhesive down the left side and the right side of this fold. You do not want to put it here because you want to be able to make this a pocket. So just the left side and the right side of the fold. And then you would fold it up like that and stick it down. And then you would apply adhesive all around this skinny piece and fold that up. And then you could add some decorative elements here to dress it up. And you could tuck a gift card right in there into that pocket like that, which obviously that's too big. But, you know, you can tuck a little tag in there or a gift card. So that's how you would make this a pocket card. The other option you have for this is you could glue these two panels together. So if you glue them together like that, which I'm actually going to do here, because I had made my other one a tri-fold card, and I'm gonna glue those two together. And instead of being an accordion fold that you pull out all the way, this now flips like a book. So you see it doesn't, there's that one way and then there was this way. So you can glue these two pieces together if you want. So three different ways to do that card. Hi Mary. All right, so I kind of like this book style though. It makes it fun. All right, now we are going to stamp this piece. Now this piece is supposed to be two and a quarter inches, or excuse me, two and a half inches by five and a half. Let me start over. <laughs> this piece is supposed to be two and a half inches by five and a quarter inches. But I saw the dies from the Ornate Layer Set 
and this particular die fit perfectly in that space. So I die cut it with that. This is very vanilla cardstock because it matches that very vanilla there. And we are going to stamp with that. Now I'm going to use this point set of petals set and I have the stamps already pulled out and I'm going to use a little berry spray and we're going to use real red and early espresso. Now, this is a stamp. You can color these berry sprays if you want to with your Stampin' Blends or your Stampin' Write markers or your blender pens, but the stamp set actually has a fill-in stamp or a stamp that fills in these little berries, but you don't have to color them if you don't want to. And I'll put another one there. So I'm stamping an early espresso. And now I'm going to pull out real red. And I'm inking up these berries. And you just, because it's photopolymer, you can see through the stamps to line them up. There you go. So for those of you that don't like to color, you don't have to color. This is an easy way to get your images filled in without pulling out your coloring tools. And the poinsettia stamps that are in the poinsettia place or poinsettia petal stamp set also have fill in images. So you have these poinsettias right there, but you can fill them in with those stamps. You can, the leaves can be filled in with those two. Even you have those little, um, like the center of the flowers, you can use that to add color to the center. So no coloring necessary. All right, and this is going to get glued to the middle of the panel right there. And you certainly don't have to die cut this piece. You can just cut a piece of Whisper White or very vanilla cardstock or whatever color you want and put it here and you can stamp it, stamp a greeting on it, lots of ways to do this. Just remember though that if you make this a pocket card, you would not add anything there because this is actually where you're going to apply the glue to make this a pocket. So this step's only needed if you're going to keep this as an accordion fold card. Okay, now we're going to decorate the fun front. This is the fun part for me. All right, we're first going to stamp these pieces. So I used the smaller label die from the Halloween magic dies that are in the holiday catalog. And I used the poinsettia place designer series paper. So you can see this is the backside of this one. I loved this wood grain and it's so easy to stamp on. You can see what you're stamping. So that made it perfect. So on one of them, I'm going to stamp happy holidays from poinsettia petals. Now, normally I'm not a girl that uses happy holidays. I prefer Merry Christmas because it's Christmas, right? Hi, Sharon. Thank you. But the Merry Christmas in this set did not fit and I'm stamping it over towards the right side of this piece because I'm going to be decorating this side. So the Merry Christmas in this set didn't fit enough for me to still decorate this side. So that's why I'm going with happy holidays, but there's so many other places on this card to say Merry Christmas that it's okay. All right, now I'm going to stamp May Magic and Wonder Bloom this holiday on my second label here. And again, it's early espresso. And this one I will stamp right in the middle of that label. Now, when you're using photopolymer or clear stamps, it's really important because they don't have a foam cushion like red rubber does to have cushion underneath. So inst for instance, I have a, a pack of grid paper that I'm stamping on. So there's lots of cushion here. If you don't have a stack of paper you can uh, stamp on, there's the stamp and pierce mat that we have that provides cushion and you'll get a much better image with your photopolymer stamps if you can provide some cushioning underneath your image. Okay, I'm going to set this aside for now because we are going to die cut some red velvet poinsettias. So I'm going to pull out my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now this is going to be available September 1st. And I will tell you guys, there is a sign up starter kit promotion coming out September 1st where it's always $99. You get for $99 in free shipping, you can pick out $125 worth of product, which is enough to get this machine. But they're also throwing in a pre-cut cardstock pack. So you'll get the kit to make 16 cards plus envelopes plus two stamp sets plus a pack of rhinestones. And it's all still $99 with free shipping. So even if you sign up just to get that, and then you don't do anything else and just drop. 
it's still a really good deal. You end up with $175 worth of product for $99 and no shipping. So just something to think about that starts September 1st. So I have the three sizes of poinsettia dies on here and I also have the inner pieces that are going to emboss these petals and I'm putting them on red velvet paper which is also in the holiday mini catalog and I'll put my cutting plate number three on top and run this through. Okay, and then I'm gonna run it back through again just to ensure that I get that nice deep embossing. I got my machine out of the way. Yes, yeah, stamping on the designer series paper is fun. And Sharon, if you forget about doing that, you're gonna wanna play Mystery Stamping Hour. <laughs> this Sunday because we are going to do a little stamping on designer series paper for that event. So it's Sunday night. I posted it in my mystery stamping group, eight o'clock Eastern time. Okay. So let's get rid of these velvet paper scraps. And do you guys see this? Can you see the embossing that that did? I will show you the die. So there's this one. If you were to just stamp these poinsettias, you could stamp them and then cut them out with just this piece of the die. But if you don't want to stamp them, you can add this piece to the center to the inside of this. Um, and there's only one way this can fit. So you'll just have to move it around until you get it to fit in there. And then that part will cut and emboss. And they're red velvet. So what I like about that is it makes people want to touch your card. A Christmas card where people are like, ooh, ooh, I have to touch this. I love that. I love texture on my projects. Now, I'm going to use glue dots to adhere these um, velvet petals or velvet flowers together. I'm going to put the glue dot right in the center there, press it to the wax paper, and I'm going to offset them. I don't want to stack them just like this. I want this to look very full, so I'm going to offset them. I will do it with this small one. Oh, so pretty. Okay, now we're going to assemble everything together. So these two are going to get lined up. And I'm going to have one that glues on here, and this other one's going to glue right behind it. So it's going to be hidden. So let's glue this one on first. And I just want the adhesive. Oh, okay, Sharon. Well, thanks for popping in for a few minutes. And saying hi. I hope you have a good appointment too. We're going to apply adhesive to this just along that left side because we want it to just stick to that skinny front panel. We don't want to glue the card shut. So I'm just going to put a small amount right there and I'm going to make sure I get it as straight as I can. Sometimes I glue things on crooked. How about you guys? And that's when I pretend that it was supposed to be that way. Now this one, I can put a little more adhesive on it because it has a bigger surface area to adhere to. So starting with the left side, I will add a little bit more glue. And I'm going to line it up. I'm going to line it up with my previous label so that it's hidden. And then I'm going to close it and adhere it. Now the thing with using liquid glue is you've got some time to adjust it and to move it around. So that's why I'm using liquid glue. If I didn't get it quite lined up or it shifts a little bit, it's okay. I have time to move it. Okay, do you see how that's hidden? So that when somebody opens this, there's that, and then they open this again, and you can write your message in there. So let's add our point set of petals. And for this one, I am going to use liquid glue because it has a paper backing, and I'm gluing it to paper, so. It will stick good. And I'm gonna put this right here. Or let me see, I'm gonna try and get as much of this on the card as I can. Okay, I think that was the best way. Okay. And let's add another little fun touch. I'm gonna take my bone folder and I want these petals to have a little bit more dimension, so I'm going to curl them. 
with my bone folder. And I know once you put this in the envelope and it goes through the mail, the petals are probably going to get flattened. But maybe this is a card you might want to hand deliver or maybe you could uh, mail it in a bigger envelope and put a little protective layer in it or use a bubble mailer or maybe somehow it will survive the postal service and arrive still fluffed up. A little bit more curling there. Okay, oh, there's a petal I missed. There we go. That adds so much doing that, don't you think? And now, these are beaded pearls. They are stunning. They have a metal back, and they have three pearls there, inlaid in, with silver and silver. And the really cool thing about these is you can take a Stampin' Blends marker and you can color them. So remember, we have Stampin' Write markers and we have Stampin' Blends markers. Stampin' Blends are these square-shaped ones and they're filled with alcohol ink. And you can use alcohol ink to color on non-porous surfaces like the pearls in these beaded pearls. So you can make these any color you want. I'm going to leave them white. I like the way they look. And you can attach them with glue dots. Just stick it right to the card like that. And attach it right to the center of your poinsettia. So. It always amazes me how the little details really make a card pop. So for this, in this instance, just taking the bone folder and curling those petals, the little embossing details on the red velvet paper, and then this beaded flower, beaded uh, pearl center, just really takes this flower over the top. And then also, rather than stamping on just a plain sheet of cardstock, we stamped on this wood grain pattern from Point Setup. Um, place designer series paper that also makes the card a lot more interesting and then using your paper snips to distress the edges so just all those little touches really make a card go wow for me and I will show you the other one again so you can see them again so this one opens like a book these two panels were glued together this one is an accordion fold where I did not glue it Otherwise, it was made the same way. And then the third option, which I didn't make, but um, is the pocket one where you just attach glue there and glue everything shut and you can slide things in there. So, all right, that's the project I have for you guys today. Um, it's been a little crazy here with cross country. I started coaching the middle school team again, and that's where I've been spending my mornings. So I am so excited for that again. We've had really beautiful sunny weather for that. So um, I'm having my mystery stamping Sunday night, eight o'clock Eastern time on the mystery stamping with the joyful stamper group. So I would love for you guys to join me there. And um, otherwise I plan on being back next Thursday. Oh, hi Kim. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to post the, the measurements and the dimensions for this card in the description here as soon as I log off here so you guys can write it all down from there and I hope you give this a try. It's a really easy fun fold and it is. It's such a wow, don't you guys think? So, all right, well, I'll be back here again next Thursday, 11 o'clock Eastern time and I hope you'll join me for, um, for another happy half hour. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye.